The Old Testament reading is taken from Numbers chapter 21, verse 4 to 9. Numbers 21, verse 4 to 9. Beloved, let us hear the word of God. They travel from my hall along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us out, out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread. There is no water. And we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They beat the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and leave. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and look at the bronze snake, they lived. Beloved, the word of God. Our gradual hymn is Ancient and Modern 701. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel according to John, chapter 8, reading at the 21st verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 8, verse 21 to 30. John 8, 21 to 30. Once more, Jesus said to them, I'm going away, and you'll look for me, and you'll die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, Will he kill himself? Is that why he says, Where I go, you cannot come? But he continued, You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am he you will indeed die in your sins. Who are you? They asked. Just what I have been telling you from the beginning, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is trustworthy, and what I have heard from him, I tell the world. They did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, 
then you know that I am he and that I do nothing on my own but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many believed in him. Beloved, the gospel of Christ. Let us pray. I speak to you in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Our anchor text is taken from the Gospel reading. I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am he you will indeed die in your sins the gospel of John chapter 8 and the verse 24 and the theme for reflection is unbelief in Christ will lead to eternal death unbelief in Christ will lead to eternal death The vultures are beginning to circle. Jesus is drawing closer to the end of his time here on earth. And as his time draws near, it appears Jesus is on a collision course with his opponents, the Jewish leaders. Earlier in the discourse at the beginning of chapter 8, Jesus had proclaimed to them that he was the light of the world. And the Pharisees had taken him on, saying he was testifying about himself. And therefore, his testimony was invalid. This had led to some exchanges with Jesus. And Jesus finally telling them that he was going away and they would look for him and die in their sin. And that where he was going, they could not follow him. Jesus meant by this that he was going to his father and to his glory. And that his detractors would not be able to follow him. Because by their disobedience and refusal to accept him, they had distanced themselves from God. We learn a number of things from this narrative. You will look for me. It speaks to us that certain opportunities come our way in life, which if we refuse to take up, may not come again. To each of us is given the opportunity to accept Christ as Savior and Lord. But the power of refusal or acceptance lies with us. And the opportunity can be refused and lost. The love of God is expressed for us. He says he foreknew us. He called us. He chose us. And he justified us. And he would glorify us. That is a promise. And it is certain for any and every human being on this earth. The only thing that stands in our way is our refusal or acceptance of that offer. And so the choice, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, is ours. Secondly, implied from that statement is the truth that life and time are limited. Our time on earth is when we have to make our decision for Christ or otherwise. In fact, that is why we are here. We are here 
because we are being given the opportunity to make that decision. Because we have been condemned to eternal separation from God until he sent his son. And so that is why we are here. Our time here is national service for us to decide for Christ or not. And if we miss the opportunity, then end of story, as Jesus tells them. You die in your sins. And so the question for us all is that ultimately where do you stand with Christ? That is a question that each of us must address. It is not about we married, we came, we were born, we went to school, we married, we had children, we took care of them, we had good jobs. All of those are ancillary to the main purpose of our being here. And indeed, it is when we have decided for Christ that we live good lives in our marriages and looking after our children, in performing at our jobs. So that is the key thing that the scripture speaks to us this morning. That ultimately, all depends on where we stand in Christ or with Christ. And that our time here is limited. And none of us knows how long we have. And so my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we cannot keep delaying. Because one day we may wake up and it may be too late. The third point we learn from the discourse is that Turning down this opportunity of accepting Christ has consequences. It means we will die in our sins. We will be separated from God. And we will face judgment for the missed opportunity. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we would have missed the goal of life, which is to be restored into fellowship with God. By looking up to Jesus, who will be lifted up on the cross, as a bronze serpent in the wilderness. And you know, um, that first reading narrative, it's, it's quite interesting that they, they had used that same route. And in their memory, they were asked to go back. And yet when they were in the will of God, no serpents came up. But as soon as they disobeyed and murmured, serpents were unleashed on them. It meant that what? God had protected them as they were walking through the first time. So it's our disobedience and it's our sin that takes us away from God. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the problem of the world is sin. It is sin which separates us from God and indeed makes us hostile to him. Romans 8 and verse 7. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. However, the cure for sin is Jesus. It is he who brings forgiveness. It is he who brings cleansing and strength and grace to live our lives as it should be lived, through the empowerment and grace of the Holy Spirit. But dear friends, any of us can refuse that offer. Just as we can refuse a cure when we go to our doctors and they give us the options. And just as some of the Israelites still refused to look at the bronze serpent for whatever reason. And as you and me also do today, when we have been convicted by the Holy Spirit and the word of God, we refuse to listen. In all the sermons that come to us, in our own quiet time, in our reading of the various scriptures, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. And very often we rationalize it away. Oh, I didn't hear him well. It wasn't him. And we refuse to listen. Jesus is reminding us this morning that if you will not believe that I am who I am, you will die in your sins. 
my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, only recognition of Jesus Christ as Son of God and obedience to and acceptance of him as Lord and Savior can cure both the individual and the world. This morning, he offers us that opportunity once more. And the responsibility is ours to accept or to refuse it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the quiet of our hearts, let us reflect on what we have just heard. Our theme is unbelief in Christ will lead to eternal death. And that we are here on this earth for a purpose. And it is to determine where we stand with Christ. All the other things we do are ancillary to our being here. Ultimately, what counts? would be your position in Christ. Good job, fine. Good marriage, fine. Children brought up well, fine. But ultimately, where do you stand with Christ? This morning we are being reminded that our time is limited. None of us knows when. And so today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And that once we accept him as Lord of our lives, he will give us the grace. He will sustain us with his Holy Spirit. That we may live lives that will be pleasing in his sight. But without the Spirit, we can't do nothing of ourselves. So let us pray and ask for His Holy Spirit. Let us thank God for how far He has brought us into this season of Lent. Thanking Him for the spiritual graces He has given us. And He is continuing to give us as we remain faithful with Him in this journey. Remember our dear nation and pray for this nation. Remember the church of God and pray for the church. Remember your loved ones, even your enemies this morning, and pray for them. Finally, let us bring our own requests and petitions before the throne of grace. And anybody who looked up to that bronze serpent was healed. So this morning, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who is lifted up on the cross. And will draw all of humankind unto himself. The power for acceptance and refusal is yours. As for him, he has declared his love for us. As we bring our prayers to a close. Let us say, O son of David, have mercy upon us. Amen. 
Then the Lord be with you. And let us bless the Lord. Please let us humble our heads and ask for God's blessings. O God, who chose to show mercy and not anger to those who hope in you, grant that your faithful people may weep as they should for the evil they have done, and so merit the grace of your consolation. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you this morning. Go with you into your homes, wherever you're going from here. And surround you and your loved ones today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Mass is ended. Go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Our recessional hymn is Ancient and Modern 301, 301.